worship. I am happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Come on, put your hands together like this. Hallelujah. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you. Say, neighbor, welcome into the house of the Lord. Come on, look at your neighbor on the other side, the one that you don't like as much. Say, neighbor. I love you. Neighbor, welcome into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we say right here?
Raise your hands this morning and let's pray together. Reach all the way up to the Lord. Father, thank you. We reach up to you now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Thank you for supernatural help. Somebody just shout, help. Lord, we need your help with our children, with our families, with our finances. In every area of our lives, we need your help 
In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness and all of his mercy. As Elder William Harris coming to pronounce the blessing of all of our children. So glad that you're here. God is a good God. Yes, Father God, we thank you for our children. We praise you that our children are alive, that our children, oh God, are flourishing in you, oh God. Our children are victorious in you, Father God. We pray that they will live lives of victory, lives of triumph, oh God. Triumph over the enemy, triumph in every area of their life. Oh, God, that our children will succeed in life. Oh, God, we pray that our children will have a genuine relationship with you, oh, God. We pray that they will walk and live and thrive in the ways of God. Oh, God, we pray that our children will be protected from every predator, every enemy that will steal, kill, and destroy them. We pray, oh God, that our children will spend eternity with you on high. Oh God, we want our children to be saved and live for you, oh God. We pray for our children, our children's children, and generations to come, oh God. We pray that your perpetual blessings will rest upon their lives. All of these things, we pray in your holy righteous name in Jesus name amen how many believe that it's already getting better in your life that God is moving on your behalf that God is working out every situation that you thought was impossible. That God is doing something for you. How many believe that down on the inside?
set your mind on God. There's so many distractions in this world. There's so many people talking. There's so many things that can come. Your kids can bother you. But sometimes you have to take the time out and truly worship God. Truly praise God. Truly ask God to come in and work on your behalf. When you look back over your life, I know, John, that God brought you through something that nobody else ever made it through. How many have that testimony? There's things that we've gone through that nobody else could have got us through but God. Do we have a but God in our situation? Do we have a but God in our life? Do we have a but God in our circumstance? Do we have a but God in our walk? Do we have a but God on our job? Do we have a but God in our family? Do we have a but God in our finances? Do we 
devil, but God in our situation. It has to be God that gets you through. We always look at somebody else. Jordan, you lead me through worship. I can't do it for you. It's got to be God. You got to do it between you and God. I can't tell you how to do it. You have to find it out for yourself. God will lead you through. If you just worship God with the authenticity of what he put inside of you, he'll work it all out. You have to worry. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not into your own understanding in all of your ways. If you acknowledge him, he'll direct your path. Somebody needs direction. Can we say open the floodgates? Send it up right here. Shout it out right here. Open the floodgates. God did it for you. Put your hands together and just give the Lord a praise. He did it for me. He did it for you. And he did it for your family. And everything is going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. Bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. If you're here this morning for the very first time, we just want to say welcome to Emmanuel Christian Center. We are so glad that you are here. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. God is a good God. Somebody say amen. Amen. God loves you. Somebody say, God loves me. Don't forget a road map to college. Sign up uh, to attend. And John and Esther, uh, they are going to help you with a process of getting money to take and send your kids to college. You'll be amazed at how much money is out there. Free money. But you got to know how to apply for it. You got to know what to do. You got to know how to access it. Somebody say, Amen. Somebody say, Amen. So sign up in the foyer with them. God is a good God. He loves you. Don't forget, praise. Somebody say praise. Praise dancers are needed. If you want to dance, you used to dance in the club, but now you're in church. Now let's dance in the house of the Lord. In the club, you turn it up. You cut the rub. You did it all. But when you come to church, you won't even clap your hands. Lord, help. Somebody say the blood. The blood of Jesus, praise dance. I sign up in the foyer with Sarita. Where's Miss, uh, Miss Sharita? Where you at? Wave at us. Oh, there's a husband right there. Terry, Brother Terry is going to do it. God is a good God. Sign up if you want to cut the rug in the house of the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Don't forget membership is so important. I would not live my life today without the church. I would not raise my family today without the church. It is so important. You need to join the church and be a part of what God's doing. God says that my ears would be open and my eyes would be attentive to the prayers that are made in this place. And so when you come to the house of the Lord and you pray, God hears it. And it's the condition of your heart whether he answers it or not. Somebody say amen. Amen. Don't forget, uh, we need help. We want to develop our children. Our children are excited. We baptized over 30 people uh, a couple of weeks ago. Half of them were children. So God is doing something in our children, and we want you to know we need a children's choir director because they, we want them to sing. Somebody say amen. If that beats in your heart, God is a good God. See, Minister Jordan, and uh, just know we will work with you and help you to help develop our children. If we want to be around 2070, we got to raise up our kids. Somebody say amen. So when you see little kids doing something, don't despise them. We are building the church tomorrow. At one time, you were a little kid in the church. Somebody say amen. 
We got to support them or we run them away. Somebody said, don't run them away. They'll die in gangs. They'll die in drugs. And just know God want our kids to be blessed. So join us. Somebody say amen. How many of you used to sing in the choir years ago? You sing in the choir years ago. Now it's time to get back in the choir. We need your help. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, just get back in the choir. You could be missing your greatest blessing. God may have anointed you and called you to sing to him. And yet you are sitting down. You could be holding up and missing your greatest blessing. Somebody say amen. And so I want to encourage you to see Minister Jordan and just know God is a good God. We need some ushers. Men, let all the men stand. Let all the men stand. Let all the men stand. Manpower. Ooh, ah, ooh. Ladies, if you've got a man, clap your hand. If you want a man, clap your hand. If you are believing for a man, clap your hands. God is a good God. Men, we need your help in the, in the house of the Lord ushering. See Elder Ronnie. Where you at? Where you at, Elder Ronnie? See Elder Ronnie. Uh, we want you to sign up and serve one Sunday a month. Just one. If we get enough men, we can sign. We can, we can just do one Sunday a month in the house of the Lord. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. When you walk the aisle serving God's people, God will bless you. When you hand them an announcement, when you hand them fan, when you hand them whatever they need, God will bless your life. Raise your hand with me, all of you, all over the house. And everybody say, Lord, thank you for the men of Emmanuel Christian Center. Oh, come on, say it again. Say, Lord, thank you for the men of Emmanuel Christian Center. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. You may be seated. Don't forget Monday morning Bible study, men. I'm going to be talking about conflict. If you can't handle conflict, you'll not make it in this life. Because you're going to have conflict on your job, in your family, with your children. You're going to have conflict in your marriage. You're going to have conflict. Somebody say amen. That's why people divorce. Because they can't handle conflict. You got to know how to handle conflict. Somebody say amen. And you can't always run away. You can't always blame somebody else, and you can't always call the cops. They're going to take both of y'all to jail. I want to thank the Lord for our food bank. Esther and our team, the food bank. Give the Lord a hand clap for the food bank. God is good. Woo, somebody say amen. Tomorrow we'll have the service of Miss Angela Davis. She went home to be with the Lord. She served in our children's ministry and uh, wife and their team snotty noses and changing their dirty diapers and, and so she went home to be with the Lord tomorrow at 11 o'clock if you are available come by and let's celebrate the Lord with, for her and her faithfulness to him somebody say amen now next week you got to be here next week next Sunday you got to be here my old boss Dr. Raleigh Washington is going to be speaking to us he's my old boss somebody said the boss man is coming he was my old boss, and uh, he was a pretty good boss. I won't tell y'all all the stories, but, but he'll be here. He'll be speaking to us. He lives in Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, just know that the Lord is good. Somebody say amen. Stand up on your feet. Let's pray together. Stand up on your feet. Let's pray together. Somebody say the blood. This is war. This is war. Your life is warfare. How many of you know you, you, you got a battle to fight? The devil's not going to leave you alone. He hates you. He want to mess up your life. He want to steal your soul and take you to hell. But God said, I came. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it what? More abundantly. Raise your hands. Let's pray together. Father, we plead the blood. This is war over our lives. We plead the blood. Somebody shout the blood. Somebody shout the blood. This is war. Teach us how to fight. Teach us how to win. Teach us how to have the right strategy. This is war. So we just plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. The blood. Somebody say the blood. Come on, let's pray together. The blood. You can't have my children. You can't have my grandchildren. You can't have my finances. You can't have my health. You can't have my blessings. I am. Bless. Somebody say, I am. Bless. Give the Lord a hand clap as the choir sings war. 
Hallelujah. Our children dismiss. Children, you, you can be dismissed. Children, go ahead on. Be blessed. Learn of God. Be filled with the Holy Ghost down on the inside. Grow in your anointing. The church of 2050 needs you. I don't think y'all hear me. The church of 2050 needs you, so y'all better learn in Jesus' name. Hey! 
Take your Bible this morning. Let's get right into the word of the Lord. The grass wither, the flower fade, but the word of God shall stand, what? Forever. Thy word, O oh Lord, is settled in heaven. Take your Bible and go with me to the book of Romans. Romans, Romans, find the New Testament, the book of Romans, and, uh, and just know that the Lord is good. Find uh, uh, the Acts, and then right after that, you'll find the book of Romans. Go with me now to chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say wait a minute. Oh, God is a good God. Somebody say amen. Romans chapter 8. If you have it, say amen. The word of the Lord to you today is God is going to preserve you and keep you. Somebody say he's able. Oh, he is able when something happened in your life first thing we do is question whether God's going to be there for us and if he's going to take us through it. But my Bible says he's able. Somebody say he is able. Romans chapter 8, do you have it? Verse number 35. If you have it, let's read. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pair or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long, counted as sheep for the slaughter. But then Paul says, nay, in some of these things, in a few of these things, nay, in all these things, we are what? More than conquerors through him that what? Loved us. For he said, I am persuaded that neither death nor what? Life nor what? angels nor what principalities nor powers nor things present or things to come nor height nor depth nor any other what creature shall be able to what separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord raise your hand with me and everybody say Lord thank you for the anointing of preservation I am preserved. I am cared for. I am taken care of. You are my help. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord as we take a minute and work through Romans chapter number 8, a few verses. You know, the Bible starts out in Romans chapter 8. The first verse says there's no condemnation. Then it moves on to our salvation. Then it moves on to justification. Then it moves on to sanctification. In chapter 8, Paul talked to us about predestination, one of the most theological books in the Bible. And then it ta he talked to us about having a glorified body, glorification. But my assignment today is to encourage you that there's an anointing 
uh, that he talks about in preservation, that God will keep you. Somebody said the Lord will keep you. You don't have to do it by yourself. These are powerful themes throughout this one chapter in the book of Romans, chapter 8. God inspired Paul to write this book to Christians to help us to know that he's really on our side. Somebody said, the Lord is on my side. No matter what you're going through, you don't have to go through it alone. The Lord is on your side. It is one of the most theological books in the Bible. Because in seminary, we get hung up on predestination. And we get pre hung up on, you know, what God meant and what he had in his heart. Way before we were born, way before we came out of our mother's womb. But you have to read it with wisdom, insight, knowledge, prudence, and knowing that God has a heart for you and I. Somebody say, the Lord loves me. It shows that God knows our beginning from the end, and you are not a mistake. Somebody say, I'm not a mistake. You may not have known your mama. You may not have known your dad, but God knows who you are, and he planned for you to be on this earth at this time in this dispensation of time, and you are not here by accident. Somebody say, I have an assignment. Oh, the Lord is on our side. Somebody say amen. So no matter what you're going through, it's just the devil trying to mess up your life. Somebody say amen. God knew you before you were born. He said in Jeremiah 1, you know, before you were born, I knew you. Before you were conceived in your mother's womb, I had a plan for your life. He knows all about us, and we have to trust that God has our best interest at heart. Somebody say amen. We need God's supernatural power and help in our lives every day. Somebody say every day. Every day. Every day. You are special to God. Look at your neighbor, elbow him and say, you are special to God. But the enemy wants you to mess up your life. The enemy wants you to destroy your life. The enemy wants you to do yourself in. The devil wants to steal your soul. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that we are special to God, that we are God's masterpiece. Somebody say, I am somebody. Oh, you may call me names. You may look down on you. They may talk about you. They may not treat you right. But the book of Romans says, we are, Romans 8 says, we are somebody. Somebody say, I'm somebody. Somebody say, I'm somebody. In these last days, people are quitting God. In these last days, people are quitting everything. They are quitting their marriages. They are quitting their families. They are quitting everything except drugs. Hoing around, reckless living, and turning it up in the club. They quit everything else, but they ain't going to quit that. That's why alcohol is booming. That's why marijuana is off the chart. That's why sexual perversion is through the roof. Pornography and sexual perversion makes more than all the football teams in America. Because we got a, a freakiness in us. Oh, <laughs> let me leave that alone. Paul said, let's go back to Romans 7. Paul said in Romans 7, before he came to Romans 8, he said in Romans 7, he talked about the flesh, and he talks about our human nature. And then he, he began to declare, oh, verse number 24, oh, wretched man, 724, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death, from the freakiness, from the craziness, from the anger, from the violence, from the bitterness that's in this body. And then Paul said, who shall deliver us? And then he answered his own question. Thanks be to God who gets us through by Jesus Christ our Lord. Raise your hand with me and everybody say, Lord. Come on, I need your help. Say, Lord, thank you for Jesus. Oh, say it one more time. Say, Lord. Thank you for Jesus. People are quitting everything. They're quitting their faith. Some people, since pandemic, hasn't come back to church. Basically, you know, in their quiet way, they quit. 
Somebody say amen. You know, in America, we have the great layoff or the great quitting or the great resignation. People just left their jobs. You know, the, the, you know they just, the great resigned. They just resigned and left. You know, there's an attitude today of just quit. You get mad at your husband, just quit. Now, you might not get a divorce. You might not leave him, but you just cause him hell. <laughs> Let me help somebody. You know, you, 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 you'll be in the house, but you just won't be nice. You won't cook. You won't turn it up, and you won't do nothing else. <laughs> Am I in the right church today? Did I come to the right church, or do I need to go down the road? But Paul said in Romans chapter 8, what shall separate us? A little argument ain't going to separate nobody. Somebody say amen. amen. With all these problems, the enemy is after you. All your family problems. All your job problems. And a lot of time, it is the biggest problem is yourself. It's not the man that sells you the liquor. It's not the man that sells you the drugs. It is you. Somebody say, help. help. But we like to blame everything in life on money problems. Just manage what you have. Little money becomes big money. But you got to manage it. Somebody say, help. help. You got to manage what you have. Don't try to live like the Joneses. Don't try to be like somebody else that rolls up in a Range Rover that they hadn't paid for. Your car ought to be paid for. I don't drive cars that are not paid for. I taught all my kids, pay off those cars. At the brokest part of my marriage, I had two car notes. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I said, Lord, why can't I get ahead? Why, why, why am I broke? He said, it's them car notes. Because I had the car notes. I had the insurance. Then I had the gas bill. Because if you got a new car, you're going to drive. And you're going to ride. But it's not the money problem. And then some of us like to blame other people. People problems. They like to blame, they, they like to blame the white man, the black man, the Hispanic man, the Asian man. You know, they like to blame the Indian man. And they're not even around anymore. They want to blame everybody. Don't blame nobody. Take responsibility and know that the Lord is on my side. Somebody said, the Lord is on my side. Oh, y'all sound like Raider fans up in here today. Somebody said, the Lord is on my side. And then some people, your husband say something to you, you just scroll up. Boom. Chill out. Maybe God put your husband in your life to check you. Oh, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Elder. Maybe God put your husband in your life to help you to fix that area of your life that you've never fixed. Oh, maybe God put your wife in your life to help you. Somebody say amen. Men, if you don't want to get challenged, don't get married. Your wife's going to challenge you. They're going to ask you questions. They're going to ask you why you do that, why you do that, da 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 da, -da. what about this, what about that? So what I just say, I say, I'm in my nothing box. I'm doing nothing today. Don't ask me no questions. Somebody say, help. And then you, you, can't, you can't live in pride. Somebody say, help. And then some people like to blame their problems on their kids. It's the kids. It wasn't for these kids, Lord. Maybe we could have some money. Just don't give it to them. You don't have to give your kids your money. Somebody say amen. Now, if you want to be generous and kind, you want to be nice, then you can give them some money. Somebody say amen. But you don't owe them anything. Somebody say amen. You raise them up. They're grown girls. They're grown men. You don't owe them anything. Somebody say help. You just love them and pray for them. Now, if you're like me, now I got a problem with my kids. My problem with my kids, I can't keep no cash. When I get around my kids and I think about, man, I get to see my kids. I just pull out my wallet and say, hey, what, what, here, here's, here's a 50. 
Here's a hundred. And my wife always say, why are you giving your money away? Because I'm going to get some from you. Somebody say, help. You know, as we go through these problems, and Paul was talking to us about the problems of life. You're going to have some problems. Don't get mad at anybody. Don't get mad at God. You're going to have to work through some problems. Anybody in the house online have ever been through a problem? Let me see your hand. You're going to have some problems. Jesus said in this life, you're going to have some tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Somebody say, help. That's why you ask the Lord for help every day. Raise your hand with me right now. And everybody say with me, say, Lord, I need your help. In every area of my life. You know, you got to, and we have to control our anger. Don't be mad at people. Some, some couples are in the house. She's mad. He's mad. Ain't no love happening there. They're just mad. Somebody say amen. Some men go through life just mad. I'm mad at everybody. Just mad. Don't live your life in anger. The Bible says be not angry. Don't live your life being angry. Let it go. Somebody said, let it go. Somebody said, let it go. See, in the midst of all these things, God will preserve you. God will preserve you. In the midst of all of it. Years ago, I had a grandmother. And uh, she went to be with the Lord. And she was a lady that believed in preserves. She would, you know, she would make up her different things, everything. She put greens in preserve jars. She put peaches in. Did y'all have grandmothers like that? They, they, they put everything in a preserving jar. And it would keep. And when times got tough, she'd reach up on the shelf, pull down. A, anybody know what I'm talking about? Anyway, do I have any agreement up in the house today? Pull down a jar of preserves. And it would taste as fresh as the day she made it. See, that's the anointing on your life. God will preserve you. When times get tough, you are still fresh. You are still good. You are still able because there's an anointing that's on your life. Raise your hand with this pastor. And everybody said, Lord, thank you for the preserving anointing. I am preserved. Say it again. I am blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap. I feel like preaching. The Lord is good. Somebody shout, help. In Jesus' name I pray. God will preserve you and keep you. He is able. Somebody say, he is able. He is able. She would, she would put all that stuff in there, push it down with a spoon. And then she'd tighten the lid on it. And then she said, now take that and put it on the shelf. And that's what God does. He fills you with his anointing. With that preservation anointing, he pushes it down in your spirit. Then he takes the blood, and, and the, which is the lid of life. Put the blood over your life and tighten it up with the blood. That's why we sing blood songs. You don't have to believe in blood songs. That's why we're going to always sing blood songs. As long as I hold the microphone, as long as I'm a pastor of this church, we're going to always sing a blood song. So make it up in your mind that we believe in the blood. Somebody say the blood. The blood. Let's talk about this anointing of preserving. God will preserve you. God will keep you. But you got to stay with him. You got to stay with him. That's what the old mothers told me years ago in the church. They, with the white gloves on and the white dresses. They said, baby, you got to stay with the Lord. L-A-U-D. They didn't know how to spell L-O-R-D, Lord. They said, you got to stay with the Lord. I said, yes, ma'am. Then one Sunday, when they first said it, I said, what's the Lord? 
But then I realized what they were trying to say. Then they said, baby, he'll keep you. He'll preserve you. Until the day of his coming, he'll take care of you. He'll keep you through the tough times. Somebody say, help. And here in Romans chapter 8, Paul gives us three ways that God preserves us. He gives us three ways that God keep us. And for you parents that got children, turn them over to the Lord. God is able to keep your son. God is able to keep your daughter. God is able to keep your grandbabies. Just turn them over and begin to pray, Lord, preserve them. With all the fentanyl that's going on in our world today, preserve our kids from the drugs. Preserve them and keep them, Lord. But you got to put the lid over their life. And the lid is what? Oh, you heard me. The blood. You got to put the lid over their life. The blood. Every day, the blood. Raise your hand and let's do it. Online, on Zoom, wherever you are. Stretch that elbow all the way up and say, Lord, I plead the blood over my children. Say it again. Say, Lord, I plead the blood. Now keep them. In Jesus' name, I pray. He is able to preserve them and keep them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Somebody say amen. Three ways that Paul, let me finish up. Three ways that Paul talks about in Romans chapter 8, how God will preserve us. Number one, he says that God would give us power. Somebody say power. Romans chapter 8, verse number 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth where? In you. Somebody say it's in me. Somebody say it's in me. That's why we sing stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. I was on the grill one day grilling and then all of a sudden, I came out, and the fire was died. I said, man, my fire went out. Then I got my little metal thing, and I lifted up the rack, and I reached in there and stirred it up. And then as I stirred it up, it started smoking. And as it started smoking, then all of a sudden, a, a, a flame came up. See, you got to stir up God's power. you you looking for somebody else. It's in you. It, Paul told Timothy, it's in you, boy. It's in your mama. It was in your grandmama. In your great-grandmama. You got the goods. Somebody say, I got the goods. Raise your hand with this pastor. Everybody say, Lord, thank you for your power. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse number 11, the same power. That raised up Jesus out of that grave. It's in you. And all you got to do is what? Somebody say, stir it up. Elbow your neighbor and say, stir it up. Elbow on the, on the other side and say, stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. If you don't use it, you what? Lose it. You got to stir it up. The anointing of preservation, you got to stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Paul talks about the toughness of life. He talked about all the pains and the trouble and the problems of life. He talks about the trials, the tribulation, the stress. He talks about the loss, the perils. He talks about the hard, fiery trials that we have to go through. He talks about the setbacks, the problems, the stress. He talks about all the bad things of life, drug addiction, alcohol. He talks about all the things that we're gambling. He talks about all the things that we have to go through. You know, they can have all the commercials they want. They can have all the commercials they want on, on betting. I'm not going to spend a penny. You have my word. I'm not going to spend a penny. Betting will get you addicted. Betting will mess up your life. Betting will take your money from your house payment. Betting will cause you to be broke. Somebody say amen. That's why at the end of every commercial, at, at, at the end of every commercial, they tell you if you gambling problem, call 800. 
I'm not going to bet on the Broncos today. I only bet when I know I'm going to win. And that's most of the time with my kids. My son, Josh, said, Dad, you're not going to go down the slide. My wife and I was in California at this big hotel. They had a big slide, taller than this building. He said, Dad, you ain't going to go down the slide. I said, I bet you $50. <laughs> I got in my shorts. I walked up that slide with shaking knees. <laughs> and I, Mr. Nidio, I got up to the top. And I looked down. I said, Lord, if you've ever been with me, be with me on this slide. I need your help. Somebody shout help. It was nothing but me and a bunch of kids about tall as this microphone. I felt like a fool. I looked like a fool. But I was going to win that bet because I only bet when I know I'm going to win. Somebody say help. So when I was in line behind these little kids, they got on there and went down the slide. I said, oh, Jesus. I started praying in tongues. There's another little kid went down the slide. Then it came to me. Then the, the lady called me up. My legs were shaking. But I got there. She said, now, sir, you got to sit down. She said, you can't go down the slide standing up. <laughs> Pastor Kyle, I sit down, man. But I was nervous. And I just started. And she said, now, you got to put both hands up. So I was going, she said, you can't hold on to the rails. And I'm thinking, Josh going to win. I want to get up and turn around and go back down the slide. But I sat down and I said, Lord, I put my hands up. And I said, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need. Then, so the water was coming and I wouldn't move. So the lady gave me a little push. I went down the slide and said, help. It was one of the most fun things I did on the whole trip. And if I could go back this afternoon, I'd go back and go down it again. Somebody say amen. You're going to have problems in life, but enjoy life. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Then I called Josh and said, Josh, you owe me $50. I don't have it to this day. For some reason, Pastor Kyle, that conversation never come up. When I bring it up, he goes, Dad, you're going dark. How am I going dark? You owe me money, dog. In the midst of it all, you got to give the Lord praise. And all these things, Paul says in Romans 8, 28, you are more than a what? A conqueror. Don't let nobody turn you around. If they are mean to you, just march ahead. The Lord is on your side. Somebody say, the Lord is on my side. God will preserve you. God will keep you. There's an anointing on each one of your lives. And you know what it is. Somebody say, amen. God will bless you. He gives us his power to get us through. The power of the Holy Ghost. That helps us to be able to make it when difficulties hit our lives. Everybody going to have problems. But everybody don't know how to solve their problems. And you solve them by holding on to the Lord. Holding on to God's unchanging hand. Paul knew about God's power in Romans chapter 8. He knew about it. He knew about how God would keep him and preserve him. And take care of him. He knew that God would bless him and help him. Why, pastor? He got knocked off his horse and lost his sight. And was blind. But God preserved him. Gave him his sight back. But not only that, he had many haters in the cities that he went to. They threatened him. If you ever come back here preaching that Jesus stuff, we're going to kill you. Paul knew that God preserved him, took care of him by his power. And he'll do the same thing for you and I. He was beaten by some of them in some of the cities that he went into. Not only that, he was ran out of town. Get out of here. 
he knew that he was preserved and kept by God's power. So writing this chapter, he knew what he was talking about. He knew that he was being led by the Holy Spirit to pen these words to you and I. Thrown in jail. Thrown in prison. He wrote most of the New Testament in jail or prison. Timothy, Titus, Corinthians. He wrote them in jail. He knew about God's keeping power. Elbow your neighbor as a neighbor. Do you know anything about God's keeping power? The Lord will keep your life. The Lord will preserve your life. The Lord will sustain your life. The Lord will bring you out. You are blessed. Somebody say, I am kept by the Lord. Paul lived with a thorn in his side. The Bible doesn't tell us anything about what it was. But no matter what it was, God kept him. God kept him in the midst of it all. In the midst of it all, God sustained him. In the midst of it all, God is going to sustain you and your family. The devil's going to fight. He's going to roar as, as a lion. Not that he's a lion. He roar what? As a lion with no teeth. So you just got to plead the blood. Somebody say the blood. Paul knew about God's power in his life. Not only was he stoned and, and uh, he was shipwrecked when he told them we shouldn't sail. They said, shut up, you're a prisoner. And they sailed in the shipwreck. But the Bible says Paul came in on broken pieces of the ship. You got to come in on the broken pieces of life. You may not get there on a million dollar budget. You may get there on just a thousand dollar budget. You may get there on the broken pieces of life, but you're going to get there. He said they all got the shore. We came in on the broken pieces of life. No matter what your situation is, just come in on the broken pieces of life. Come in on a broken prayer. Somebody say, I am blessed. Not only that, Paul knew about God's power in his life to preserve our human body. One day he was, after he came off the ship, came in on the broken pieces of life. Then he was wet and we built a fire. But right in the midst of building a fire, the Bible says a viper launched out of the fire and attached himself to Paul. And the Bible said because of the power of God, Paul shook him back into the fire. And that's what you got to do to your devils. Somebody say, shake them off. Back into the fire. See, the devil don't like fire. That's why he don't like hell. You got to shake him off. Somebody say, shake. Shake, shake him off. Shake him Back into the fire. God sustained him through it all. He's going to sustain you through it all. Young man, God's going to take care of you. Young lady, God's assigned to take care of you. You know, mom, God's going to help you with your children. Dad, don't worry about your sons and your daughters. God is going to preserve them. You just keep the lid on their life by pleading the what? Blood. The blood. Somebody say the blood. the blood. Paul knew about God's keeping power. How does God sustain us and preserve us? Number one, by his what? Power. Somebody say power. power. That anointing to preserve. A lot of you are sitting here listening to me. You survived COVID. It wasn't the pills you took. It wasn't the vitamins you took. It wasn't the mask you wore all the long when you tried to talk and you couldn't talk. It was none of that. It was simply God's keeping power. It was simply God's anointing that was upon your life. At least four times I went to the COVID ward. But a lady told me, now, Mr. Simpkins, you don't have to go up there. Because everybody up there has got COVID. But my assignment as a pastor was to go pray for the people 
that were members of our church. So I put my mask on, and I prayed, Lord, get me out one more time if I could. I went in, anointed them with oil, prayed over them. And I hurry up and left the hospital. Straight to the bathroom, wash my hands, wash my face, and said, Lord, keep me. It was God's keeping power. It was God's keeping power. God will preserve you. That anointing of preservation will come upon your life. Somebody say, I'm preserved. Somebody say, I'm preserved. How does God's anointing of preservation work? Number one, by his power. Every day you got to stir it up. Lord, I need your power. I need your power to overcome drugs. I need your power to overcome problems. I need your power to have success in my life. I need your power to have a healthy family. I need your power to make, manage my money. I need your power not to bet on the Broncos game today. I need your power. Somebody say, power. Wonder. Working power. And number two. How does God preserve us? How does he preserve us? We are adopted into the family of God. Somebody say, I'm adopted into the family. Romans chapter 8, Paul tells us in verse 15, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of what? Adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You got to know who you are. Somebody say, I know who I am. Said again, I know who I am. They call me every name in the book. When I was in college, they called me all kind of names. Can I tell you some stories? Can I have two minutes to tell you a story? Yeah. When I played football at the University of Tulsa, we went to Texas Tech, the Red Raiders. It should have been the Red, Red, Red Neck Raiders. I was on the field, sitting back, you know, when you catch the uh, kickoff. Me and a guy named Ricky Watts were way back there by ourselves. And these fans came up, you little black, blah, blah, blah. you all ain't nothing. They call us names. Yeah. And then they start cursing, you little MF, drop the ball. Yeah. Watch y'all, how'd you get on the field? Yeah. They just start calling us names, yeah. cursing at us, yeah. saying bad things. But I knew who I was. I was a Christian boy that believed in the Lord. I didn't care what they said, the redneck raiders. I didn't care what they said. I know who I was. I'm a child of the king. Somebody say, help. And Ricky Ross said, Alvin, they talking to you. I said, they ain't talking to me. They talking to you. They ain't talking to me. And he turned around and said, shut up. That didn't help. They kept on talking. It got better. We went down to the University of Florida. We got down to the University of Florida. I was from Florida, and so it was exciting to play in my home state. Florida didn't recruit me. Florida State didn't recruit me. None of the Florida teams recruited me. So to come back as a Division I football player and play in Florida was a huge thing for me. We got there, and there was a guy on our team that was always a troublemaker. And he... In the, the, back then, the, the Florida had their, their, their mascot was the gator. So the gator, the guy was in the gator suit with a long tail. So the gator walked past our bench. And this guy named Robert Tenner stepped on the gator's tail. And the gator couldn't move. The fans saw it. They started yelling every name in the book. You black, da, 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 da. you black, you look in what? Then they start throwing cans of beer, pop, and everything. But no matter what people do to you, then Robert got off the tenor and the coach said, put your helmets on. Because <laughs> we didn't want to get hit on the head. He got off the gator and then the gator went on. And then uh, I went, and the gator was leaving, and this other guy reached out to step on the gator's tail, and then the other guy kicked his leg back. You're going to get us killed out here, man. <laughs> Leave the gator alone. If you ever go to Florida, you ever play, you go to a game, don't mess with the gator. <laughs> Listen to the pastor. Don't mess with the gator. Somebody say amen. 
But see, I knew who I was. Paul said we are adopted into the family of God. No matter how people treat you, you got to know who you are. Somebody say amen. amen. I can stand here and tell you story after story until this time next week about things that happen when you got to know who you are. Somebody said, know who you are. You are adopted into the family of God. And he's going to take care of you. He's going to preserve you. He's going to keep you. You're going to endure. God's going to bless you. You're going to thrive in life. And as Tammy Faye used to say, you're going to make it. You can make it. I don't care what's going wrong. God won't let it last too long. You're not in this all alone. You can make it. So you got to sing that song to myself. Everything is going to be all right. You are adopted into the family of God. And when trouble comes into your life, God's going to preserve you. And God's going to keep you. You and your children. Do I have anybody in the house today that know what I'm talking about? Then raise your hands online. Everybody say it with me. Say, Lord, thank you for your keeping power. Look back over your life. Can't you see how the Lord kept you? Look back over your life. Can you see where the Lord brought you from? Look back over your life. Can you see the battle that the Lord brought you out of? Look back over your life. Can't you see that the Lord was there for you on that surgery table when they finally woke you up from that anesthesia? Look back over your life. Can't you see that the Lord was there? That you're not about yourself. You are part of the family of God. Somebody say, I am a part of the family of God. Let them talk about you. Let them say things about you. Let them treat you bad. Know who you are. Raise your hand and say, I am adopted into the family of God. When you know that you're adopted into the family of God, then you can make it. No matter what's going on, you can make it. Somebody say, I can make it. Say it again, I can make it. Life may be against you. The wind may be blowing in your face. But guess what? The winds change. The winds change. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, the winds change. You may be walking a headwind today. But the winds change. Just march ahead. Keep on marching and facing the wind. One day the wind's going to change. Then all of a sudden now the wind's at your back. Do I have anybody in the house today that know that the wind is at your back? You might have some problems. You might have some difficulties. You might have some challenges. But no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. I got to give you my third point. You are still here and you can make it. Get your chin up. Let's go forward. Get your chin up. Let's march ahead. You can do it. Somebody say you can do it. And we got to train our kids that they can make it. When my boys used to help my wife bring in groceries, out of the car. I wouldn't help because I paid for them. I wouldn't help. Jordan and Josh, and then they, they'd be struggling at the door, and she'd go help her open it. No, don't help them. You cripple them. Let them struggle. They struggle. <coughs> trying to get in. See, ladies, sometimes if you help a man too much, you cripple them. If we would cut the caterpillar out, then he would never become a butterfly. Sometimes you're going to have to struggle. Sometimes you're going to have to just work at it. 
Sometime you're going to have to stay in there. Sometime you're going to have to just dig your heels in and push all by yourself. But you got to know the Lord is on my side. Somebody say, the Lord is on my side. I close with number three. How does Paul tell us that God, how does Paul tell us that God preserve us, number one, with that knowing of, knowing of preservation, number one, his power. Somebody say his power. power. And number two, we are adopted into the family of God. Let them call you whatever they want to call you. Just know you are adopted into the family of God. The Texas Tech Red Raiders. I don't care what they said. I knew who I was. They called. Then when we got ready to go through the shoot, go into the locker room. Oh, man, it got rough. But I know who I was. Some guys start throwing towels at them. You know, start throwing stuff at them. And the coach says, cut it out. Get in the locker room. Shut your mouth. You know. One guy put his leg over the banner, or over the ledge, like he gonna come down there against all of us. We would have killed him. <laughs> I would say, Lord, don't let him come. He, they done called us all these names, and, and now he think he gonna come down here in the in the midst of us. Oh, we, oh, we would have stomped him to death. We would have been in prison today. Somebody say amen. amen. But you gotta know who you are. Somebody say you gotta know who you are. Let the devil roar in your life. You're a child of the king. Let him roar. I got to close at number three. Paul says that we are led by the spirit of the Lord. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. Somebody say, I'm a child of the king. Say it again, I'm a child of the king. Say it again, I'm a child of the king. One more time, get it in the atmosphere. I'm a child of the king. king. Say it one more time for the spirit world to hear. I'm a, I'm a child of the king. Now raise your hand with me all over the house and say, Lord, thank you that I am a child of the king. The Lord is my help. Say it again. The Lord is my help. I am preserved until the day of his coming. Say it again. I am kept by his power. Say it again. I am more than a conqueror. Say it again. I am God's child. I am somebody the Lord is on my side. Say it again. The Lord is on my side. Say it again. The Lord is on my side. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you would have never made it. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your children's side, they would have never made it. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, I'm so glad I feel like preaching in here. I'm so glad. That the Lord is on our side. We are God's masterpiece. We are adopted into the family of God. Nothing shall separate us. We will not quit. Look at his neighbor and say, neighbor, don't you quit. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, don't you quit. The Lord is your help. The Lord is your shield. The Lord is your buckler. You are God's masterpiece. Somebody, anybody that agree, just give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you for all your help. Thank you for all your blessing. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. I am, help me say, I am blessed. Now somebody, anybody, just give the Lord a hand clap. If you agree, if you agree, just give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you for all your help. Raise your hands all over the house.
Stand up on your feet. Raise your hands all over the house. Know who you are. Paul says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Romans chapter 8. I want you to read that all week long. I want you to read it all week long. I've been reading it for the last month. And it's getting more and more in my spirit. If God be for us, who can be against us? The Lord is on my side. Somebody say, the Lord is on my side. Don't give in to the problem. Don't give in to the situation. Declare there's an anointing on my life that God preserves us. Somebody say, the Lord is keeping me. Say it again, the Lord is keeping me. If you are alive today, that's his keeping power. The grave give him no praise. So I came to give him praise. I came to tell him thank you. I came to worship him because he has preserved my life. He's preserved my family. He's preserved my children. And I just want to say thank you. Somebody help me say thank you for all your help. Thank you for all your many blessings. Raise your hands right where you are. And everybody say with me, say, Lord, thank you for your keeping power. I am kept by the Lord. I am adopted into the family of God. I joined Paul. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. I am empowered by God's anointing. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Will you just give the Lord a hand clap? Thank you for the anointing of preservation. Now, for those of you that are going through challenges, for those of you that are going through battles, come on and just stand with me at all. I just want to pray for you. Give me the honor of praying for you. I just want to pray for you. You're going through a battle. You're going through a situation in your life. Paul said, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation, stress, distress, persecution, famine, a nakedness, a pair, a sword. What shall separate us? And then he says in verse 37, then all these things, we are more than what? Conquerors. Through him that what? Loved us. Somebody say, God loves me. Say it again, God loves me. And he said, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, no angel or demonic force be able to separate us. The Lord is on my side. Somebody say, the Lord is on my side. Somebody say, the Lord is on my side. I want all the ministers to come and stand behind these wonderful people that have come. Thank you for coming to the altar. You're at the right place. We all go through battles. We're going to get through it. You're going to get through it. Didn't he bring you out last time? He's going to bring you out again. He, did he bring you out, John? We're going to get through it. We're going to get through it. Don't give up. Stay in there. And stir up the anointing. And call on the power. Wrap your arms around yourself. There's something inside it. There's a treasure in earth and vessels. Wrap your arms around that treasure. Father, I pray for your people on this altar. I pray for them. Some are going through hell. Some are going through battles. Some are going through problems. Lord, we declare no weapon. No weapon. Say it with me. No weapon. Come on, say it again. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. The weapons may be, pro may be aimed, but they will not prosper. The weapons may be formed, but they will not prosper. I am empowered by God. Come on, help me say, I am empowered by by God. Say it again. I am adopted to the family of God. Say it one more time. I am daily led by the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord is on my side. Come on, say it with authority. The Lord is on my side. 
Say it again. The Lord is on my side. One more time. The Lord is on my side. I am blessed. If you receive it, just give the Lord a hand clap. You are blessed. You are highly favored. You are empowered by the Spirit of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Turn around and give somebody a hug and tell them it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. The Lord is on your side. 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 the blood. Oh, the blood. The blood. Help me call them. The blood. The blood that came down from Calvary. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Somebody say, I am covered and preserved by the blood. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. You may be seated. I'll have you out in about five minutes because I know you got to go watch the game and get ready. Some people are going to the game. Somebody say amen. amen. The Bible says in, the, in Psalm 68, Psalm 68 in verse number 19, the Bible says daily, blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. Daily he load us with benefits. Somebody say amen. Daily God takes care of us. Daily he loadeth us with benefits. And, if you, and he's going to do it all year long. If you turn back a page and go to Psalm 65 and verse number 11, he says, Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy path drop fatness. All year long. Somebody say, all year long. The Lord is going to take care of you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, all year long, God's going to take care of you. All year long. How many know the Lord has taken care of you? The Lord's going to bless you. All year long, the Lord's going to take care of you. And I just want to encourage you. All year long, you can make it. Somebody say, you can make it. You can make it all year long. Somebody say, all year long. Don't worry about your lost loved ones. Just pray for them every day. You got somebody in your family that don't know the Lord, just stand with me and let's pray together. You got somebody in your family that need to be saved. We don't want to leave without praying for them. Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I never gave my heart to the Lord. If that's you, just raise your hands wherever you are. You never gave your heart to the Lord. Then just know the Lord will save you. 
It's the greatest decision that I ever made to give my heart to the Lord as a 17-year-old boy in a church five miles from the beach in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Man, it was the greatest decision I'd ever made. My life began to unfold like a football game. God will bless your life. The Bible says that neither is there salvation, Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other name but the name of Jesus. None other name under heaven given among men whereby men must be saved. Buddha can't save you. Muhammad can't save you. Hare Krishna can't save you. The New Age can't save you. The crystal religion can't save you. None of it can save you. The Bible says neither is there salvation in no other name but the name of who? Jesus. But the name of who? Jesus. Ooh, doesn't it sound good? Let's say it one more time. But the name of who? Jesus. Like the Lion King. The hyenas. Say, ooh, ooh. Say it again. With the name of what? Jesus. The hyenas, they start shaking. Ooh. Say it again. The name of what? Jesus. Raise your hands and let's pray. Together. Father, we pray for our lost loved ones. Save them. Somebody say, save them. In the name of Jesus. Save them. Jesus. 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 May they spend eternity with you all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, help me say it for a minute. Jesus, feel it in my bone. Jesus, oh, Jesus. Mary's baby, Lily of the Valley, bright in the morning star. What's his name? Jesus. Save him, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you give today, God's going to give it back to you. Ushers, come forward. Give everybody an envelope. Everybody give something. Put the name of your lost loved ones on it. I'm going to pray for them. Put the name of your lost loved ones on the back of that envelope. People in your family that are living the turn it up life. Put their names down. I've got some in my family that are living the wrong life. I'm going to put their names down. names down. God's going to bless them. Somebody say, save them, Lord. Say it again, save them, Lord. Save them, Lord. God's going to bless you. He says, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, all year long, the Lord's going to take care of you. Jesus. Just call on Jesus every day. Jesus. God's going to bless you on your job, and he's going to bless you in every area of your life. Somebody say amen. I pray for maximized benefits and opportunities to come into your life. I pray that the power that is limiting you, that's demonic, will die by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I pray that plans of God will go forward in your life when it comes forward, come to your finances. Somebody say amen. We pray against all opposition of demons, of devils, of evil spirit, the spirit of death that comes against your life. We pray that it will be broken in the name of Jesus. We pray against every embargo that's on your life that's holding you back financially will be broken. Somebody say, I am blessed financially. I pray that the Lord would multiply you and make you a thousand times so much more. I pray and renounce everything bad financially that will happen in your life. The Bible says, goodness and mercy is going to what? Follow you. Goodness 
and what? Mercy is going to what? Follow you. God's got your back. Somebody say, God's got my back. God's got your financial back. God's got your back. If you're giving, stand up. Hold your gifts up to the Lord for me. And everybody say, Lord, I give into your kingdom. Thank you. I renounce the curse of poverty. I renounce lack. I renounce not enough. You will preserve me. I am anointed to be sustained by the Lord. Say it again. I am anointed to be sustained by the Lord. I give into your kingdom. I'm going forward in every area of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. If you're giving, come and lay it on the altar as an act of faith. Raise your hands and receive the blessing as Pastor Kyle come and pronounce the blessing over our lives. Stretch your elbow all the way up and everybody say with me, say, Lord, thank you. I am anointed to persevere. I am anointed to be sustained. I am anointed to be preserved. The Lord is on my side. I declare I have supernatural help. Say it one more time. I declare I have supernatural help. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. I'll see you on Wednesday night. God bless you. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Praise God. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and the Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And they shall put my name upon the children of Emmanuel. And I will bless them. Heavenly Father, eternal God, we just want to say thank you, Lord God. 
Thank you, Jesus, for persevering in our lives, Lord God. Thank you for the way you've preserved us, Lord God. We are still here, Lord God. And Father, we honor you today. Father, help us to not grow weary as we walk each and every day of our lives. Help us to not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not, Lord God. So preserve us, Lord God, as we walk, Lord God, day in and day out, Lord God. Bless us and keep us and make your faces shine upon us. Keep our mind, keep our heart, keep our joy, Lord God. And Father, we praise you in Jesus' name. Father, bless each and every one of us. I pray the blood of Jesus over us. Guard us and keep us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, family. tuning in to the Emmanuel Christian Center live stream. You have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Since